previously on Jetstream. I would say it's dangerous. It's just the most scary thing I've ever done in my life. A nighttime landing that nearly turns fatal. We were probably one full oscillation from being completely out of control on the runway. Number 16, LA Tower, you're four miles behind an Airbus, runway 24 right. And muscling in on the big boys at LAX in an F-18 Hornet. Well, that was certainly sporty, huh? When the sticks started shaking like that. <laughs> They're turning up the heat at fighter school. Are you being sarcastic now? <laughs> and running out of patience. I think that my personality is actually, you know, pissing the instructors off. Are you ready for combat flying? Standing watch over the country's borders. Six warriors in training learn the fighter pilot code. These kids, they're gonna graduate out of here and they'll be holding alert. And that will be a responsibility and a burden they will have to bear. When autumn comes to Cold Lake, Alberta, winter is never far behind. Those that can fly south, with the exception of these guys. It's halfway through fighter pilot school and six rookies are still in the running. When they got here 18 weeks ago, they'd never even sat in the cockpit of a Hornet. Now, they can take it up solo, fly in formation, and intercept a target. But that's all fighter pilot kindergarten compared to the next challenge. Dog fighting. Up to this point, we never really max performed the jet, and now we're starting to take the jet to the envelope, you know, to the edge of its uh, ability. The F-18 Hornet is a fearsome predator. But for any fighter, there's still one basic principle of air combat. Get behind the other guy so you can shoot him, and he can't shoot you. Got the second one. I got the second one on the nose right now. This is the real thing, taken from a dogfight with a MiG in Libya. It's a deadly dance called BFM, Basic Fighter Maneuvers. BFM is considered the bread and butter of a fighter pilot. It's how you maneuver the jet with respect to the enemies in one-on-one -on -one air combat to put yourself in a position to kill. BFM is not about how talented you are as a flyer, but how ruthless you are as a fighter. It's not for the guy who wants to fly the air show, but it has a very mean side. They are well-trained, they are paid, they are professional, and they may, in fact, unfortunately, have to be killers. We're all about threatening, making sure we can get weapons on first and force them to react. Winning a fight means riding the knife edge between aggression and patience. If you can force them to react, they can no longer come up to get you, and we can now use you to get down and get into a position that we're going to teach you about how to kill. Over the next few days, the students will fly a series of grueling BFM missions. And they're all a bit jumpy. I'm prepared for it, but I've been also nervous for about five days or six days, you know. And right now, Lieutenant Seamus Allen needs a win. 
A week ago, he was hauled up on the carpet for his attitude in briefings and for baiting his instructors. I've worked the most part of my life to be here, so you know I'm going to do what it takes. It's more than just a professional struggle; it's a personal struggle too, because I'm, you know, trying to learn things about myself and trying to learn how best to adapt. Since then, Seamus has been trying reputation rehab, and it shows on his progress card. Well prepared and demonstrated a much improved etiquette in brief and debrief. Well, I definitely attribute that to just sort of doing what they want me to do rather than, you know, what I want. But this is the big test. Combat. How will Seamus fare in a dogfight? He'll get the advantage of starting on offense, behind the bandit. The bandit will make a diving turn to get out of the line of fire. Seamus has to turn tighter, pulling hard on the stick to get his nose on target. The instructor in the back seat directs Seamus up to 17,000 feet. Then, he'll have about 60 seconds to make the kill before they run out of altitude. It's called the hard deck, and it's set at 7,000 feet. Bravo 60, fighter. Bravo 61, bandit. This is what Seamus sees through the heads-up display. A confusion of numbers and symbols. He has to look past that and watch for this. That was the bandit. Here we go, assess. Okay, we're not gonna do it. We're just okay. gonna wait. This is Seamus' first dogfight in the Hornet, and he's a little shy about pulling the stick. Keep it coming, keep it coming. That's it. He should be trying to bury it in his gut, but he's not pulling hard enough. Not pulling enough G's to turn inside the bandit. Uh, so he can't take a shot. Yeah, make this. And the instructor gets impatient. Here, I have control. He seizes the stick and sweeps the nose around onto the target. How about that? Can you make yeah. that? Yeah. You have control. I have control. Pick him up power. Right. Off you go. Oh, s. That's it. Keep playing. You're fighting him. God damn it. Let's go, get your nose on him. Pull, 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 pull. Power. Tighter. Yeah. Keep bailing. Go to where he was. Where he was. Think about power now, all the way back. And follow him down. Think about the altitude. Now be careful around the floor here. Got him. Got a shot. Got him. There you go. Keep gunning him. Watch the floor. Terminate, terminate. Seamus gets the shot, but not without a lot of help. That was incredible. Wow, it didn't take long to get down on the floor. He climbs back up to 17,000 feet to try again. And prove he can do it on his own. Up, down, fast, go. Get a lock on him. A120, nothing. A7. Nothing. Pull, pull, pull. Oh, sit, pull it. Patience, patience. Right. Come on, you can get him. Thousand. Pull it. Oh, hi. Oh, he's got a jank, he's got a jank. Get him. Just get him. We can help power this guy. Oh, there. Sweet. Big power. Pull. Seamus is racing down, running out of space and time, but he's slowly reining in the bandit. We got him! We got him! Gonna cash in, gunshot. There. Come on, Pepper, come on! There we go. And he gets the kill. Got him! Terminate, terminate. Wow. Probably two terminate. That's incredible.
Seamus has just raised the bar for the others. And he's not shy about sharing the news. A little late. Now I'm cashing it in. Boom. Raiding them in. Full power, full power. You're going to yeah. need it. Got him again. <laughs> Seamus got the hang of it fast. <laughs> Whatever. It's like we got him. It's like we got him, we got him, we can do it. <laughs> but that was the easiest of the basic fighter maneuvers. Good job, man. Every BFM mission from here on will be a step up. And the veterans have seen plenty of rookie dreams die here before. They start off strong, and they kind of go, oh, this isn't too bad, this isn't too hard. And then we step into BFM, and all of a sudden they realize that they don't know anything. No matter how skillful the flyer, fighter pilots know that's only half the battle. To survive in combat, you need the killer instinct. Basic fighter maneuvers, or BFM, demands a load of aggression. And that means pulling the maximum G's the jet can handle. It's going to be hard, straight back, right to your lap, as hard as you can, get that 7.5 G in. Let's just say for every uh, 0.1 below 7, you're going to open here. All right, sound fair? Yeah. Sure. Okay, sounds fair to me. Pressure on the bandit, right? Make sure we maintain that all the time to keep him scared. Keep that in mind, okay? stress and speed of a dogfight, there are dozens of ways rookies can make a mess of it. Come on, pull. A little more G, a little more. A little more. Pull, come on. Tim Coffin's mistake is the classic, not pushing the jet to perform at its limit. Pull, come on. Pull, pull. Okay, 6.4 G, so we're going to have to go a little bit more than that for the next one, all right? Oh, I thought I had. Okay. You thought you had seven? Yeah, I thought it was up around four. Not so much. Okay, ready? Break right. <sighs> Come on, a little more. There we go. Let's get into it. Yannick Jobin's problem isn't the G's. It's his airspeed. It's dropping through the floor. At speeds this low, the Hornet has all the aerodynamic grace of a Coke machine. It wobbly. We were down to 60-something knots. It started to get kind of snaky, huh? Yeah. You'd really hate to be doing that in the middle of a fight, because now suddenly you're the pin yeah. cushion, right? Everyone's shooting you. All the students are struggling with this one. Ah, I just screwed myself. Go get them. Keep fighting to a six. Keep the nose up. Keep going. Oh. But even when you're getting a schooling, a supersonic jet is a great place to get it. Things are happening quick, huh? You had your 30 seconds of fun just looking out going, hey, cool, I'm flying a hornet. Hey, uh, Have you done that yet? <laughs> yeah, there you go. But time is short, and the instructors have their work cut out for them. It was all right. How's that for a comment, huh? It was all right. Yeah, it was okay. Their mistakes stem from one common problem. All caution, no kill. We're just fighting for the sake of fighting. We're not actually killing in here. Yannick Jobin is sparring when he should be shooting. Pull him into the HUD and gun him. It solves your problem and he's dead. Right there, that fight could have been over in a third the time that it took. Pull. You hear me in the background telling you four or five times to start reefing on the stick and get to a higher G loading. Tim was warned he'd owe beer if he didn't pull enough G's. He's heading for the liquor store. How can I drive this fight? 
that's what you're going to have to start thinking about tomorrow. Okay. Dave McLeod made a mistake no fighter can afford. He let the bandit get inside his head. Oh. Do you hear that? Oh. Right? Now that's the, what is that sound? That's uh, frustration. The sound of defeat, right? You know, that, oh, which basically means, oh, man, he's going to shoot me here, right? It's like, don't do that. Survive for the moment. Don't think about anything else. Just, you know, survive from that gunshot. Survival is what the next challenge is all about. Defensive BFM. When you're the one doing the hunting, being aggressive means getting the shot. But when the roles are reversed, and you're the one who's jumped from behind, you'd better be aggressive, or you'll be wearing a missile. To shake that bandit riding your tail, you circle and dive. But you're watching your back the whole ride down. When you're defensive, the stuff you need to fly the jet is in front of you, but he is, you know, back way up over there. It's a lot trickier in, in many respects. You gotta be looking back and forth and back and forth because you're wearing, you know, whatever it is, five, ten pound helmet, and your neck is Crane up and around, looking backwards, and you're pulling, you know, 5, 6G. But a fighter pilot on the run doesn't rely on his eyes alone. In a jam, he's got a couple of tricks to help him out. Chaff, flare, deceive, and deflect. Chaff is essentially tinfoil confetti, which confuses the bandit's radar. And flares are designed to trick a heat seeker into chasing the wrong target. But when the party tricks don't work, you gotta fly your way out of it. Tim Coffin had trouble last mission not getting enough G's in the turn. The same mistake this time, and he'll be target practice. is right behind. Fights on. To shake the bandit, Tim has to turn and dive. Okay, not too deep, not too deep. Keep pulling hard, hard. Yeah, that's my bad. There's a simple way to tell if he's going to stay alive. If he keeps his nose below the horizon, he's got it right. Keep your nose down, yeah. Keep your nose down. Keep that nose down, and gravity is on your side. You're faster. Use alpha tips, so get your nose down. Yeah. That's fine, get some airspeed back. Keep them coming around. You can't shoot us there, you can't shoot us there. Altitude, altitude. That's it, now ease off a bit, get some airspeed. Can't shoot yet. No, can't shoot me. But Tim's nose keeps drifting above the horizon, like this. And this. Yeah, use altitude if you have to. Keep it coming around. And this. Transitioning 25 alpha to 10. Okay, he's easing on. You'd think flying down, going with gravity, would be natural. But it's hard to point your nose when you're watching your tail. And someone's trying to kill you. Okay, he's getting in range now. Do it on a plane or else he can gun us. Okay. But Tim's nose drifts up, he slows down, and he's toast. Terminate, terminate. Ah, it's too cool. Okay, dude, you gotta fucking really pull that stick in. This is a fighter, man. Seven and a half G, okay? In real combat, Tim would be a dead man. 
You know, it's a lot harder to do, uh, of course, looking over your shoulder. For Captain Tim Coffin, it's a confidence buster. Let's just say your last name is appropriate. <laughs> got up to 5.7 G on both the ones you did. It's critical that you get that initial brake turn right into your gut, okay, right up to 7.5 G. You're not looking up front now, you're looking behind. And uh, to get the mechanics down, you know, as far as uh, pulling G, it's just not natural. It may not be natural, but it's a must, and it's cost him the mission. He's failed. Riel, on the other hand, is on a roll. After her near-fatal landing a week ago, Riel has scored excellent marks on her last few trips, and her confidence is up. Yeah, it's kind of nice to have some opportunities presented to you where you can go, oh, I totally know what to do right now. But knowing what to do can only mean one thing. They're going to up the ante. I know definitely as they see us getting it, they ramp it up to challenge us more because, you know, like, you, you're, you can always be better, right? Like, it's fast and it's furious and it's a lot to do as long as you get it before time runs out. Riel knows better than anyone here, fortunes can turn on a dime. And they're about to, again. Say in combat, a righteous dog fight is a dirty dog fight. And if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Fighting a hornet, kind of like a knife fight in an alley. You'll run in there, try to kill the opponent, and you'll be out of there before anyone else knows what's going on. They've pressed the attack, and they've been jumped from behind. Now, for the first time, the students will try fighting head to head. Gonna get guns. <laughs> The polite name for it is Neutral Fight. It starts like a game of high-speed chicken, two jets flying head-on. The trick is to turn at exactly the right time to circle in behind the other guy. First to the trigger lives. This is probably one of the most difficult things we do because of the sheer speed and the limited amount of time they have to make the uh, correct decisions. And the problem is, after six or seven BFMs, most of them just know enough to be dangerous. So far, Riel Erickson has been breezing through basic fighter maneuvers. But the bar is higher now. In a neutral fight, no one starts with an advantage the students are expected to make their own breaks. You want me to sit in the front? Okay. When you're flying head-on at the bandit, keeping him in your sights should be easy. Or so you'd think. This is what Riel sees. The bandit is right in front. Only he's five miles away. This is what a hornet looks like five miles away. In case you missed it, there's only one way for Riel to find that plane. Look out the window. Fight's on. Hard to Weapon. Time to get the shot. Riel is trying to get her nose on the bandit, pulling over six G's, but she can't keep him in sight. Two circles, stop bleeding. Think of this stuff yourself, okay? Or be a fan, do something. Uh, I'm 
Riel never got into the fight. Do some good BFM and not just flying around wasting gas. Every time he reverses in front of you, shoot him with something. You have the gun out and you just pull out the bullets. Okay? Round two. Roll out, look at him. Let it snag the lock. And again, it's Roll out, look for him. There he is. Shoot and fight him. It's tough keeping track of a moving target when you're upside down or sideways and pulling big G's. Riel has to crane her head up and back. Start reversing, Riel. You have to think of it before he flies past you. She finally gets a shot off, but it's a miss. Terminate, terminate. Oh, five, one, two. Five, two, Work the switches, watch what he's doing, engage a lead turn, then be offensive on him. Okay? Okay. Last chance to get it right. Pull, pull. Stare at him. Stare at him. There he is. Weapon, shoot. And fight him. There you go. I lost him. Terminate. Terminate. Mission's over. And it's a long ride home when the instructor has nothing to say. went up there and I had no real game plan and therefore no execution of it so did not go very well she looked offensive to you but yeah, exactly. it wasn't there wasn't much else going on inside we're just going back and forth and there was didn't seem to be any active attempt to kill the bandit through any of that even when we got to the point where you had quite a bit of separation there where you know there could have been a good offensive opportunity it just I think we would have sat there all day. Yeah. There was, I believe, one time where she was able to actually snag a lock. Sounds pretty weak. She only got one weapon off. Is that correct? Yeah. All day? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's pretty surprising. As your reversal are You know, when you don't understand something, you don't necessarily know exactly what it is you don't understand all the time. You're just like, I know I don't get this. Well, why don't you get it? Well, if I knew why I didn't get it, I might be able to get it. Because <laughs> then I would figure that out and I would know. She gets this, she's failed. In just one flight, Riel has gone from flying high to falling hard. And in this course, you don't get many second chances. Fighter pilots are often compared to pro athletes. From a distance, they seem to have it all. A day job that rates right up there on the cool scale. Rubbing shoulders with race car drivers and movie stars like Paul Newman. Any good deal or perk that we get, uh, of which there may be a few while we're flying, we call it jam. We keep track of the jam to try and spread it around and keep it fair amongst all the pilots. But if there's one guy who's getting too much jam, he gets his call sign changed for a while. We'll just call him Toast, because the Toast always gets all the jam. The fighter pilot wannabes have tasted a little of the jam. Enough to know it's sweet. Like at night time, you know, that big contrast, you know, and you can see the, like, 10 feet behind the aircraft, you know, you've got a big burner stacks going at it, and it looks very impressive. You go to a bar in Edmonton, you're like, oh, yeah, what do you do? You can't say you're a fighter pilot, because, like, 
half the other guys in the bar are trying to pretend they've got cool jobs like being a fighter pilot. But there's another, less appealing trait that fighter pilots share with sports stars. The pain. Give me a workout. Getting knocked around in a claustrophobic cockpit day after day takes a serious toll on the old body. Fighter pilots are the airborne equivalent of an NFL running back with about the same career span. I've heard it compared to uh, eight hours of hard labor compressed into one hour of, of work. You come down very physically tired. And then as you get older, suddenly doing a 14-hour day wasn't as easy as it was when you were 22 or 23. Uh, and so there comes a point in your career where you simply are you simply can't do it anymore, and that's a hard thing to accept. Veteran or rookie, they all come with a best before date. Six to eight years of full-time flying. A few more if they're really lucky. Captain Paul Umrish is the most senior fighter pilot at his gun squadron. He's 34. Thinking about it intimidates me. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know what I want to do, and I just want to keep doing this forever. But you can't. Your body will eventually give up on you. And the end of the road always arrives sooner than they imagined. I do sometimes think about that last flight, how it'll be walking away from the Hornet, knowing that that'll be the last time that I fly the Hornet. And it's, uh, it just gives me an empty feeling. It's uh, something I, I try not to think about. <laughs> Today, it's Captain Patrick Peltier's turn to leave the flight line. Peanut's still got the chops for the job, but he's jumping before he's pushed. Leaving the force for an overseas gig, training pilots on smaller jets. Pilots mark their last flight with a bittersweet ritual called the final pass. A send-off with friends and family. In this case, Peanut's wife, Loretta. Peanut gets one swan song solo in an F-18, and he'll make the most of it. With his squadron buddy Kraut riding shotgun on him one last time. Peanut runs through some fighter maneuvers. Ripping through the sky like there's no tomorrow. Because for him, there won't be. When you call it quits here, you give up more than the high G's and the non-stop adrenaline and the jam and everybody watching. It's in your blood. This is part of you, and the machine is part of you, and you walk around feeling half dead when you're not flying until you're messed with that machine and doing your job. And so to let that go, you're letting a part of you go. <laughs> but there is one thing that Peanut will never have to say goodbye to, the camaraderie. <laughs> If Peanut took an accounting job tomorrow, he'd still be considered a fighter here. You don't get the boss. <laughs> For two, you don't kill the pilot. Well, that's some worse, Peanut. Thanks. Peanut, hug your wife. In a high-stakes job where danger is always along for the ride, once in the club, forever in the club. Tim Coffin's been having a rough ride of it lately. But you wouldn't know it. Keeping his chin up is one skill he's mastered. The two circle plates. I wasn't, uh, you know, your max displaced. I wasn't going at uh, 35 alpha. I'd start, like, I'd start pulling. I was, did awesome, right? But that's all I did today. 
Ah, uh, dude, I know. And you know what? And then, like I said, it takes a lot of practice. I mean, I'm just like... He's had some struggles. He failed his BFM 5. He does have the ability. I think what he has a problem with is just processing aspect, angles, closure quickly enough and seeing the appropriate response. He recognizes what he has to do. It's just way too late. But Tim's confident he'll spring back. He's seen this movie before. That's all good. <laughs> In the first uh, jet course, I had a couple uh, failed trips. The best advice some of the instructors gave me was, no matter what, show face every day. Come in to work with a smile on your face. Show everybody that you want to be here. But Tim is going to need more than a smile right now because he's about to go out on the same head-to-head -head fight that shipwrecked Riel. Beautiful day. Pull some G. Since they don't fire real weapons, this tells them who got the first shot. It looks like a missile, but it's called Automated Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation, ACMI for short. Half black box data recorder, half GPS. It records every twist and turn of the fight and plays it back graphically. Blue for the student, red for the bandit. This is the mission they call neutral fight. Tim and the bandit fly head on, then turn and start dogfighting. Just blew the horizon. Got him. There we are. Let's threaten them. There my guns. That's good. Look at the lock. Tim gets the kill on the first fight. So far, he's looking good. The only thing you could have done better is your initial break turn. Everything else was good. Nice patience. If you time that lead turn just right, you circle in behind the other guy. But get it wrong, turn too early or too late, he's got you. Alpha 130 for lead turn X. Hesitate even two seconds. One 1,000, two 1,000. Okay, there he is. Lead turn in right now. As Tim just did. And the bandit has you square in the crosshairs. I fucked it away. Tim just lost the fight. Terminate, terminate. Bruno. That's right, we'll fix it on this one, right? You have control. I have control. I'll five two ready, six point oh. We're heading up three zero zero spot now. But it doesn't get fixed. They start another fight. But Tim can't find the bandit. His instructor tries to guide his eyes. Finally, Tim spots him. But instead of trying to turn to attack the other jet, he flies straight into its flight path. The bandit warns him out of the way. Go low. Go high. Terminate, terminate. Uh, Alpha 5 one to rig. They miss, but it was a little close for comfort. He had to commit Nozlo to make them miss. Really watch that, dude. That was borderline bubble, even with him making the miss. The ACMI shows just how close it was. Students must stay at least a thousand feet from the other jet. That's called the bubble. In a fight, two jets can eat up a thousand feet in half a second. Tim was just 688 feet from disaster.
Students rarely know how badly they sucked until they're told in the debrief. But when you're walking back alone, you know it isn't good. Yeah. Do you want uh, tapes as well? Uh, yeah, his head tape over. Oh, I wonder if What's up? No, I didn't get the tape. In the air, Major Ailing was in Tim's back seat. Close the door, yeah. <clears throat> and Major McLeod was the bandit. Together, they'll decide whether he passes or fails. Okay. Lead turn X. We'll just start with that. I was like, does he not know what a lead turn is? Mm -hmm. So then I did one. It means he doesn't know when to jump into the fight. He's hoping for me yeah. to set the turn, right? Mm -hmm. And then him to turn second? Yeah. Well, I didn't turn. I just kept flying. Yeah. I'm sure you could have flown to the opposite end of the airspace and we would have kept on drawing, <laughs> waiting for that turn, you know. Didn't appear, and as if the mission wasn't bad enough already, Tim capped it off with that near miss. Really uncomfortable when I saw both guys pulling, you make the miss low and he still wants to drive at you. It's like, no, done. It doesn't take long to reach a verdict. We don't expect him to be understanding every facet of it, but there needs to be just some kind of basics there, and, and I don't think he really understands. So I'm going to uh, write this up as unset, and we'll have him redo this one. Unset. Short for unsatisfactory. A fail. It can be stressful, but it's one of those things where you can't look at it as stressful. It's another trip, you know, you got to perform. Because if you don't, then... One step closer to being uh, sent on your way. Tim knows the stakes. And he knows it'll take more than a sunny disposition to dig his way out of this one. of the fighter course, the most dangerous enemy the rookies face is the eye-gouging fatigue. I start falling asleep when I'm reading, and that's partly why I gotta reread things, because I'm, I'm like, I'm really tired, you know, I'm exhausted at the end of the day, and I'd really love to go for a nap right now. While the demands only increase, the body and mind begin to give out. It's what marathoners call heartbreak hill energy's going this way and the amount of information's going this way and it starts to cause a bit of a problem so you start making those mental errors those little things that are actually very critical and crucial and it can cost you case in point dave mcleod let's go we point zero so we get some gas numbers there mentally tapped out by a demanding flight he was on his way home. Oh, five, one left. Fuel low. Fuel. He got preoccupied with a sinking fuel gauge and didn't notice he was drifting into his lead. That was my bad. Three, zero, zero, he caught the mistake just in time. If I hadn't looked up when I did, if I just kept my head buried, yeah, I would have hit him. Any closer, and if I was your lead, I would have punched you. Well, that is serious stuff, and I tell you, I've lost friends because of stuff like that, inattention, misprioritization, right? When you are on the wing, check one thing, and then come back and check your references. That's how you do your checks, okay? But that sort of thing, man, is not on. Mistakes like that can happen when you're exhausted, and all of them are feeling that now especially when failed missions have knocked the wind out of their sails. There's also the embarrassment factor. Most of these people that are here, students, are overachievers in life, right, to get this far. They're type A personalities and they're used to succeeding. To know that they're not cutting the mustard in front of their peers, that's something that they're not used to. They're not used to failing. Both Tim and Riel will rewrite their failed missions. But privately, the instructors are betting that before the course is over, one or both of them will be sent packing.
That's next time on Jetstream.